Hi everyone and welcome to Miss Estrick Biology. If you are new here then I'm Miss Estrick and I've been teaching at schools for over 10 years and now online for a few years as well. And I'm here to help you to get to grips with those most challenging topics in biology, improve your study skills and help you to get the grades that you deserve. And today I'm here to help you with the final A-level paper of exams 2022. Can you believe it that we're actually there already after two years of studying you are now just days away from the end. So let me go through with you my four top tips of how you can smash paper three. So tip number one, let's talk strategy. Now the best strategy for paper three is this. Start at the back, but don't actually do the essay. Go to the back and read the two essay titles. And that is it. Just read them. Then go to the front of the paper, answer all of the exam questions. And the reason I say to do this is because when you read those two titles and then start at the beginning and work your way through, your brain will be subconsciously considering those two titles. And it'll be thinking of relevant topics that you could talk about. Uh, and also, shall we just acknowledge the fact that bees come in again? Not only that, you'll be able to see in the questions potentially some ideas for things that you could include as well. Now, I don't suggest you start on the essay because it does take a bit of time for your brain to warm up into it and your essay will be so much better if you have had that subconscious time to consider the relevant titles. So that's tip number one. Tip number two links to the fact that paper three will have at least 15 marks on it that are critical analysis questions. And the critical analysis questions are the ones where you get told a scientist is investigating dot 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 and they tell you the method, they give you the data, and then you might have to explain the data, but more importantly, it's evaluate the data, evaluate the method. Do you agree with the conclusion? Come to a conclusion. So it's those points, the evaluate and do you agree with the conclusion? That is the critical analysis. And the best way to get the highest marks on these questions, I have actually got a whole video on, which I'll link up here, but in brief, it is number one, highlight the sentence that says the scientists are investigating. So there will always be that sentence where it tells you what they are investigating. And within that sentence, you'll have the independent variable, so what they're deliberately changing, and the dependent variable, what they're measuring. And the reason I say highlight that is because if you have to come to a conclusion, you need to use that sentence to come to a conclusion. Or if you're asked to evaluate the data or evaluate the conclusion or was it effective, again, it always links back to that sentence. The next thing is, as you're reading through the information, pick out any information that you might think that was a good point to do with their method. So a large sample size, or if it was drug trials, have they got a placebo and a control group? So picking out the elements that make it a valid method. When you're looking at the data, highlight or annotate any key patterns you see. So it might be a positive correlation, or it might be that you can see lots of the data points aren't close to the line of best fit, or maybe you can see standard deviation bars and they overlap or they don't overlap, but pick out the key descriptions of the data. The reason you should do this is when you get to the question, you will be asked at some point to either evaluate or suggest whether you agree with a conclusion. And to do that, you need to pick out from the method or the data, depending on what the question says, elements that do support the conclusion and elements that make you question the conclusion. And the sorts of things that make you question the conclusion is if the method isn't valid, so not a large sample size, they haven't done a statistic, maybe they haven't got a control group, they haven't controlled all the variables and so on. So that's why it's useful to pick it out at the start. Top tip number three, if you've been watching all of these, I think you can guess what it is. Bullet point those answers. Now, so many of you didn't know you could do this and you've already contacted me to say you did it on paper one or you've done it on paper two and it saved you so much time and that for the first time ever, you had time left that you could actually go back and check your answers. And because you'd bullet pointed them, they were so easy and quick to check as well. And you were also able to see, did you put enough bullet points for the number of marking points and you could pick out your key marking points easily. So bullet point your answers. I've said it so many times, please, please, please bullet point your answers for paper three. And then finally, 
thinking about the essay. Now, in this video, I'm keeping it short and sweet because it's so close to the exam. So I'm not gonna talk you through the whole essay. If you want that, I'll link my video up here where I talk you through how to write the essay. And if you also need help knowing how to link the topics to the title, the importance of, then check out my A-level notes because for every single topic, I have told you what the essay links would be. So I've done the work for you. You just need to read it and memorize some of those. Also, if you haven't already seen my predictions video, then you absolutely have to go and watch that one. Again, I'll link it up here. So I've looked through all three papers. I've looked at historic titles and and I've come up with what I think the essay titles are going to be on Friday. So definitely check that out so you can see what you can plan, what you can write. But back to generic tips for the essay. Now you are meant to leave, AQA recommend, 40 to 45 minutes to write the essay. So have a think about what time is the exam starting and therefore what time does that mean I need to start the essay? So you can keep an eye on the time and do not shortchange yourself. Don't think, oh, I've got a few more questions to do here. I'll leave the essay, I'll leave the essay because the essay is 25 marks. Now that means the essay is almost 10% of your entire A-level biology grade. So you need to give yourself that 45 minutes. You should spend about two to five minutes writing a plan and it doesn't have to be detailed. You just need to be jotting down what are the four or five topics you're gonna write about and split your plan into, this is the topic, this is the AO1, this is the AO2. AO1 means this is the key information I'm gonna write about. AO2 is the importance of, it's the application. So that is when you then say, this particular topic is important because. So for example, you might be writing about photosynthesis and the Calvin cycle. That would be your AO1. The importance of, you'd then be saying, why is it so important that those hexo sugars are being made? That could be it's a respiratory substrate and therefore it makes lots of ATP for metabolic processes. But again, for details like that, check out my whole essay video. So that is it, my four final tips plus a few recommendations of videos to go and watch to get some more tips to help you for paper three, the final paper in your A-level. So definitely check out those. I'm gonna be doing lives lots of nights this week as well on Instagram and TikTok, so check those out. But for now, I'm wishing you the best of luck for this final paper, and as usual, I'll find out how it went on Instagram and TikTok afterwards. <laughs>